I'm going to show you a brilliant attacking game played at the Fide Grand Swiss on the Isle of Man. With so many great players, there are so many great attacking games. And this is one of my favorites from the tournament so far. It's the game Alexander Pretke from Russia, and he's nowadays representing uh, Serbia. And he's playing with the white pieces against Jan Christoph Duda, a top grandmaster from uh, Poland. And this game has it all. And if you want to see how you should attack, well, this is going to be very instructive because... In a way, Alexander Pretke is just applying very typical attacking uh, ideas of playing with all your pieces and opening up the uh, king's position of your opponent. Let's see how he does it. And before I do that, I will kindly ask you to subscribe to the channel because I will cover many more interesting games you will definitely enjoy. So let's see what happened in this game. D4, knight of six, c4, e6, knight of three, d5. And after knight c3, Duda takes the pawn on c4, and this is what we call the Vienna opening. It's one of the most reliable openings at the top level. It's a very solid line, uh, hoping just to equalize with, uh, with black. And Duda, with the black pieces, is one of the main experts in this opening. White goes for the sharpest line. He goes for the move e4, wants to occupy the center, ready to take the pawn on c4. And if that can happen, that's just great news. So black's idea is to play the move bishop b4, so you're pinning the knight, and now black is about to take the pawn on uh, on e4, making use of the fact that the knight is pinned. So one idea here for white is to go bishop g5 to set up a counter pin, but the nicest, sharpest continuation here is bishop takes c4, aiming for quick development, and you're just sacking the pawn on e4. Knight takes e4, and look, now you're going to sacrifice even more, as you're not going to defend the knight on c3, no, you're going to castle kingside. And as we can see also in the game later on, it's not about material, it's all about peace activity. You have already developed a bishop and a knight, your king is safe, and the other pieces can reach good squares as well. So therefore it's not really interesting for black to take a second pawn on c3, because he's far behind in development. Look at the pieces on the queen side, the king is in the middle. So one of the main continuations for black is just to come back to f6, saying that, okay, I'm a pawn up, I want to guard my king side with that knight. And this is a very important theoretical position, and many moves have been tried here by, uh, by white. And interestingly, Magnus Carlsen had this position twice, against Jan Christoph Duda. One game in 2019, the other one in 2021. And Magnus played both the moves queen e2 and the move queen a4. And by the way, queen a4 doesn't win the piece because the knight can still come to c6 to solve the check and protect the, the bishop. But anyway, this was not played in the game. Queen c2 is a new move. This has almost never been seen in, uh, in, uh, in games before. And I think it's a very interesting idea. Let's see what Pretke has in mind. After castling, he brings the rook to d1. So the rook is doing quite well on the d file, supporting the pawn. It's opposing the queen. So it will not be easy for black to challenge that pawn on, uh, on d4. It's well defended. So knight bd7, black continues developing. And white played the move knight e5. This is a very typical idea. And now I think black should not be taking that uh, knight on e5. Because after d takes e5, it's a discovered attack on the queen and the knight. The knight can still block on d7. But now the knight will come into e4. And we have a lot of attacking ideas with a beautiful knight. The bishop can come to g5. Very likely a rook lift will be introduced very soon as well. And that's what we get to see in the game as well. Because black didn't capture that knight on e5, but instead went for the move bishop e7. He's bringing more pieces backwards. And it's understandable that you want to protect your king with as many pieces as possible, but it's not the kind of developing move you are looking for. So white goes rook d3. And this is one of the main ideas of white's play. Beautiful idea, getting the rook over to the king side. And I think now we have a very important position is how should black continue here? Well, that's that's the, the big question. In the game, there followed knight b6. So the knight attacks the bishop on c4. But I think this is not very precise. And the reason is that the knight, very often in this opening, the knight on d7 challenges the knight on e5. And I think that's very important so that you can um, always try to eliminate that attacking piece. So the key move here for black is to put more pressure on that knight. With the move c5, you're challenging the pawn 
on um, on d4 and very soon you're ready to go queen c7 get out of the d file and try to open the center that's a good strategy when you're on the defensive side but let's see what happened in the game knight b6 was played bishop to b3 and now knight fd5 on the board so black is trying to set up a blockade but honestly i'm not sure this is looking great well knight b4 is the idea to set up an attack against the queen and the rook but look the rook comes over to h3, threatening checkmate in one. And black is for a very difficult choice. How are you going to defend against this threat? If you play the move g6 to close this diagonal, the queen will come to d2, followed by queen h6. And there's almost nothing you can do against this mating threat. This looks very dangerous. If you block with h6, then the sacrifice on h6 is speaking for itself. After taking, rook takes, you're renewing the mating threat. If you block now the diagonal so that the queen cannot come to h7, you give a check on g6, you cannot escape, king h7, queen d2, boom. This is going to be checkmate very, very soon. Therefore, Duda played the move f5, and that's a very typical response. So you're not moving your g and h pawn, they, they stand there. You don't want to make any further concessions, but having the pawn on f5 means that the knight is on a very good square. It cannot be challenged by the f-pawn any longer. And now white goes queen e2. Changing directions. The queen is on its way to h5, introducing new threats. Black goes queen e8 to prevent the queen from coming there. Bishop d2. Maybe not the most exciting move of the game, but very important in the attacking process. You're not... Pro well, you're protecting the knight, but that's not relevant. It's all about getting this rook into the game. Black went a5, maybe trying to go a4. White is not interested in that business. Play the move here. a4 himself, bishop f6, and now rook to e1. All white's pieces are ready to join the attack. And that's very important before doing anything else. You're pulling down, there's like long-term compensation and you need to optimize all your pieces before launching the decisive attack. Black played the move c6. It's looking like a rock solid position, strengthening that knight on d5 any further but now one of the most exciting moves of the game g4 this is a very important attacking idea and maybe not something you would have considered because you're moving a pawn in front of your king but you want to get rid of that pawn now if you take on g4 white is happy to recapture with the queen and now the pawn is no longer there the bishop will find a new diagonal to rejoin the attack in the game there followed bishop takes e5, d takes e5, and now the move bishop d7 was played. Now g takes f5 on the board and black's idea was to recapture with a rook. It should be clear that if you take back with a pawn, there is this move e6. White now has a passed pawn, it's attacking the bishop, and these two pieces are very nicely supporting that, uh, that e pawn, which means that the further the pawn gets, the harder it will be for black to mobilize it's a major force. So rook takes f5 played, but this also has a big drawback. Now there's no longer a pawn on f5. The knight comes into e4. That's a very nice move. If you take the pawn on e5, because that's possible, I think rook g3 is the idea. And there are so many attacking ideas against that pawn on, um, on g7. Maybe queen will come to g4, maybe bishop to h6 sometimes the bishop can come to c3 but okay right now that knight is guarding that square so better don't do that but there are big problems for black in uh, in this case queen e7 was played in the game but now it's the move queen to g4 the queen is joining the attack rook takes e5 on the board and now various interesting moves but Bishop c2 is played. As we can see, the bishop didn't have much to do on this diagonal. Now it's on the b1, h7 diagonal, and it's ready to strike somewhere on h7, if possible. Knight c4 was played. Black is trying to bring defenders to attack the bishop. And, well, you, you got to make a decision here. Bishop g5 was played. The bishop was under threat, of course. That's the idea of this move, knight c4. What should... White have done? Well, knight c3 is a very interesting move. So that after knight um, goes back, rook takes e1, bishop takes e1, you're ready to trade off this knight, and very soon you hope that the bishop will come in with devastating threats against the pawn on h7. Especially this pawn is under threat already. But bishop g5 was played, and I think this was the moment for Duda to make a very good move. He had to do it now. 
and he didn't do it. The key move here, and I think it's very difficult to find it, it's the move queen takes g5. It's queen sacrifice, eliminating more attacking pieces. After knight takes g5, rook takes e1, the king has to go to g2. When you see this position at first, you think all white's pieces, they are totally crushing. White is about to take on h7. But apparently after the move h6, things are not that simple yet. Let's go back because this was not played and instead Duda kept the queen on the board, played the move queen b4, attacking the rook on e1. And now the rook just goes to e2, solid defensive uh, idea. You're guarding your bishop, everything is well protected. Black went for the move g6, so to take away any threats against the pawn on h7, but now the queen comes in, renews the threat against the pawn on h7. Black goes for the move h5. Stopping the threat, and here the queen comes to g3. So having provoked the h-pawn to come forward, the queen is now putting all its attention on the pawn on g6. That's very nice. It's very difficult to do anything against it. Also, the queen keeps an eye on this rook on e5, even though it's still defended. There are discovered attacks, uh, checks in the, uh, in the position. So queen takes b2 was played, taking a pawn, protecting the rook on e5 one more time. But now... Knight f6 check is the key move with the idea that if you take it, there's bishop takes f6 and you have a huge threat. The queen is in a pin. The rook cannot really move away. Well, you can give a check first. And if you go away with the king, the rook can even be taken. But look now, queen takes g6. This black king is wide open. King f8, queen g7, king e8, queen e7, checkmate. That's a very easy line to calculate for a top player like Bretke. So knight takes f6 is not possible. The king went to g7 instead, trying to keep the pawn on g6 defended. But now the shot of the game, knight takes h5 check. And that's a beautiful idea. You're trying to remove this g pawn so that you can set up a discovered check against uh, the black king. Now g takes h5 was played, but let's see if you try to run away with your king, it's queen f3, and that's game over. If the king goes to e8, it's bishop to g6, capturing the pawn. The king cannot go anywhere. That's checkmate. If the king goes to g8 instead, the nicest line here is knight f6 check. The square is still covered by the knight, but after knight takes f6, there's another beautiful check, rook h8, so that after the king captures, you take the knight with check. That's the main difference, king g8. Queen takes g6. If the king goes into the corner, it's queen, e queen h7, checkmate. That's it. The king has to go to f8, but now queen f6 again. If it goes to e8, it's queen e7. King g8, bishop h7. Everything is sacrificed. King takes queen f7, king h8, bishop f6. Boom. What an amazing attack by, uh, by white. But this, this was not played in the game. Don't worry. It's getting even nicer even shorter and nicer. After knight takes h5, the knight was captured and now fantastic move, bishop h6 on the board, double check with the queen and the bishop. If you do take the bishop, it's queen g6 because the bishop is helping to cover the g6 square. Beautiful mate. If the king goes to f7, which was played in the game, now it's queen g7 with check and black resigned because after king e8, it's queen f8 with checkmate. I have not often seen a, such a strong grandmaster like Duda getting crushed in such an amazing style. And it looks like it was so simple for white. Well, in fact, it was not too simple, but you can see that black's position was very cramped. All its pieces, most of them, they didn't really participate. And if you just make sure that all your pieces have a clear attacking duty task, then the position plays itself. You just have to open it. You don't count them pawns. You just open the position and sacrifices will always work in your favor. Let me know what you think of this game. And then very soon I will see you again. Click on the subscribe button to see more amazing attacking games from this tournament and much more. See you soon. Bye bye.